Do you love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans, and if you like what you taste, send a digital cash tip directly to the Guatemalan farmers that made it possible. Proceeds help us grow this channel, Gratuitous, and Monero. This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys. And by Sweetwater Digital Asset Consulting, connecting new money with old money since 2018. Cake Wallet and Sweetwater Digital are trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Pauline Shanget, CMO at ChangeNow, a cryptocurrency exchange. In this episode, Doug and Pauline discuss the driving force behind the company, the obstacles they had to overcome to prove themselves to the Monero community, how the highest rate of trading pairs has been between BTC and XMR, as well as insight on how they are able to navigate certain KYC compliances and continue to remain an avenue for Monero. Monero Talk starts now. Awesome. Thanks for coming on. Good morning. Sorry for the, the slow start. It's a little early for me over here. No worries. No worries. I, I love doing these early, these early shows in theory. You know, it's like going to the gym. I love going to the gym in the morning, but then it, it's hard to actually do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super, super excited to be on Monero Talk. This has been like, I've, I am a huge fan of the Monero community and the project in general. So uh, it's been like, is it is it cringy to say that it's been a dream of mine to get on Monero Talk for a while? Uh, we, yeah, we love that. That's awesome. This, <laughs> this show is, is cringy in many ways, but mostly due to me, not the, not the topic of Monero. Of course. But, um, of course. Okay. Then, then, thanks. then I can rest easy. Where where are you where are you calling in from if you don't mind? I mean, obviously, you don't have to give me your exact location. Just kind of uh, general. I'm calling in from Europe. That's that's as much information as I'm allowed to disclose. Uh, okay. Let's, let's put it like this. Well, uh, let's let's get right into it. So I, I've been eager to get you on as well. I mean, I feel like change now has been a, a major uh, utility in the Monero community, but not talked about that much used all the time but obviously we haven't had you guys on here so i don't know where else you've been kind of promoted and talked about uh other than monero talk with regards to the monero community so this is a highly anticipated show on my end as well so yeah wh what what is the deal with change I, I really don't know much about the company other than that it works and it does what it's supposed to do which is great and i know a lot of people util utilize um change now through cake in particular the, the cake wallet uh we we tell people all the time on this show to, to use cake they're our sponsor and we have people reaching out to us all the time how to what's the easiest way to get monero and we very often tell them you know download cake uh, you know, you could get your crypto elsewhere if it's hard to get Monero, and then you can just swap it right in the wallet, obviously using Change Now. So tell, tell us about it. Tell us about Change Now. Start where you want to start, and then I'll, I'll, I'll ask many questions. Of course, of course. So uh, basically, Change Now has been around for quite a while now. We launched back in uh, October. Yeah, we launched back in October 2017, and um, that was a crazy time back then. But we've managed to stay afloat so far, and um, right now, I think we're doing pretty well. Uh, we're constantly growing and growing and growing, especially considering the recent, like you know, hype on the crypto market. But basically, change now, as you've said, it does what it's supposed to do. It's an instant crypto exchange service. So you drop in, you pick the cryptos that you would like to exchange, and that's it. You drop out. You don't need to register or anything. You don't need to do anything other than what you came to us to do. Uh, so to say, um, I don't think we've been uh, promoted super hard with regards to the Monero community uh, because, you know, it's kind of uh, hard to coordinate any promos with a project that doesn't really have a team. Um, and uh, the team of which is sort of like decentralized and distributed. 
So mostly we've been uh, hanging out in the subreddit of Monero and the folks there are super duper welcoming. We really, really like talking uh, to the Monero community on Reddit. And uh, I remember back in 2018 when I just joined the company, it was in July of 2018, uh, we were just starting out with the Monero community. We weren't partnered with uh, Cake yet or anything like that. We were still like super duper tiny as a service. Uh, we came into the Monero community and we were like, hi, we're changed now. You can um, you can use us to get Monero subreddit. People were like, oh, who the fuck are you? Are you open source? Uh, and we were like, well, not, not, not particularly, not really. Back then, we didn't even have any open source libraries uh, in like open access. So we were like, um, no, is it bad? And they're like, oh, yeah, get out. <laughs> Just get out. <laughs> and um, well, some time has passed since then. And uh, we worked a lot on the service, like on improving everything. And we've partnered with Cake. Uh, shout out to Cake, by the way. Really excellent team, really excellent wallet. Uh, Vic, if you're watching this, I love you. Um, so yeah, and uh, we've slowly but surely have built some connections in the Monero community. Like with Vic, uh, we're really good, like I wouldn't call friends, but like we're really good uh, acquaintances with Justin. And uh, right now, I think that like the Monero community is one of our biggest crowds that we service. Uh, like I've looked at the stats on the most popular pairs on change now and like right at the top obviously are like BTC, ETH and ETH BTC but the next one is BTC, XMR and XMR BTC so um, when it comes to you know like adapting to the needs of the community we're always ready to do that we're always ready to listen to any feedback and uh, whatnot we like not so long ago we even launched a special like exchange service like a separate one from the main site uh, which is called xmrexchange.io, uh, and it has our widget on it. And um, when people do exchanges on the website, uh, like a part of the exchange fees, 40% of the exchange fees are sort of like collected over time. And then uh, when a time, like when we accumulate enough, we uh, send it all to the Monero community, like we donate uh, part of our proceeds to the Monero project. Uh, so that the Monero community, the Monero project can thrive and be even better than ever. Wait, expl explain that a little more. What's this difference between this widget and just using well, traditional um, um Our, like, we have an affiliate program that people can use. And um, in order for people to use our website elsewhere, uh, to use our service elsewhere, we have an embeddable widget. and. Um, it automatically, uh, you know, like it automatically collects a part of the affiliate profit, usually 40% of our exchange fees, and it sets it aside. And uh, we collect that affiliate profit and we donate it to the Monero project. Oh. Basically, it works like that. Yeah. Really? And wh what is that widget called? It's, it's XMR. XMRExchange.io. So, uh, like, who's using? Do you know people that are, who's like the biggest users of that? Uh, well, we can't really tell who is using it because you know we're registration free, so we can't really mm. um, like we like, can't really know our crowd unless like yeah. unless something happens that we need to you know um, stop an exchange for a KYC check. But that's uh, I don't think that's ever happened in the we launched it I think last July, so it's been around almost a year. Year. Uh, to my knowledge, um, and yeah, it's. I think I've looked at the stats this morning, and it's collected more than seven thousand uh, dollars to date in affiliate fees. All of them have been donated to the Monero project. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. so people are people are just using that that widget uh, on their own websites or apps or anything, whatever they want. Um, well. They are free to do that, but the Monero affiliate fees are only like collected on XMR Exchange. Um, that's like a special project of ours that we've launched last summer uh, mm -hmm. to help support the foundation because we owe a lot to the foundation, so we decided to give back a little. So that's basically how it works. Okay, so like the the exchanges that are happening on Cake is that part of this or no? That's 
uh, with the exchanges that are happening in Cake, um, we uh, like don't run that sort of program on there full time. But sometimes when we run promotions with Vic, uh, sometimes we either like lower our exchange commission so that Cake users can enjoy better rates within Cake. Or sometimes we run other like special events where we collect fees and like part of that is sent to the Monero community and stuff like that. Awesome. Yeah, I know Cake, I think at one point greatly reduced their fees for going between Monero and Bitcoin when they added their Bitcoin wallet. Yeah, they they did that. Um, I think I even remember the date when it happened. I think it was like I think like uh, I'm not going to like say whether it was a like it was a good decision for the Monero community and it was probably a good decision for Cake and we have a lot of respect for the Cake team as I already mentioned so it was a pretty big step on their side. So um, is cha are you guys coin are you obviously coin agnostic in many ways right I mean you're, you're literally in exchange for coins. Um, but I assume you, you have your favorites, right? So your, your largest trading pairs. Um, is what, what are, were you one of the founders of this company? What prompted the start of this? You guys just saw a need there. I'm just trying to get a better understanding of uh, what's, the, what's the driving force behind this, this company here. Well, uh, I am the chief marketing officer and I have been part of the team since uh, July, July 2018, so almost three years now. And um, we don't really, like, we do our best not to play favorites when it comes to the assets that we support because, again, uh, as you've said, we are an exchange service and we work with, like, almost 250 coins at this point. And, um, you know, like, playing favorites wouldn't be a good business practice, but... I am pretty sure that like a lot of our team members do have their own favorites and a lot of them do love Monero like genuinely and uh, one of our founders is a really, really huge Monero fan as well. Um, in fact, I think um, I think he was involved in mining Monero like very, very back then, but um, he just mentioned it in passing once, so I don't know how like how truthful that information is, but it is what it is. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, so like I said, certainly believe it because you guys have definitely been a big help to the community. So I have to imagine you guys are certainly pro Monero. Do you have any insight into what the actual volumes are that we're seeing between, you know, uh, other coins to Monero that are going through um, the exchange? I I can't really say, like, I don't, like, honestly, I don't know what the volumes are on the website and in our partner, like, partner wallets and partner exchanges that do uh, run exchanges through us. But I do know that on the XMR exchange website, the one that I personally manage, uh, the volume has been um, almost $2 million in two months. So that's that's pretty solid, I think. Um Mostly we have like a big whales coming in and exchanging, which is, I think it's really, really cool to see, you know, um, so $2 million on the small website and I don't really know how much um, on the big website and in our partner wallets. Like if you ask me what the volumes would be in cake, I also wouldn't be able to tell you because I, I simply don't know. Fair enough. So how about, uh, you know, big question here, how about like the KYC AML aspect? So how are you guys, how are you guys doing this? Uh, you know, Shapeshift out, you're, you're pretty much uh, very similar to Shapeshift or what they originally were. Mm -hmm. um, and then they had to kind of pivot due to regulations. How are you guys avoiding uh, what seems like the inevitable here? Uh, well, to start out with uh, like the big thing, uh, Shapeshift had to sort of pivot because they are a U.S. based company and being based in the U.S. they do have to comply to a set of certain rules and regulations all of which I'm pretty sure you're aware of but for us as we are uh, registered like incorporated in seashells um, we don't really need to comply to rules and regulations as strict as if we were in the U.S. 
Uh, and besides, we only work with crypto to crypto, so um, there is like it is a thing at play here. The procedure on change now per se. Uh, we have a risk management system on board. Uh, it checks every transaction uh, based on a set of like certain criteria. I like um, to warn you beforehand. I'm not really authorized to disclose those because people would like uh, abuse them in that case. But um, if our risk management system sees a transaction that looks suspicious, uh, it does send us a signal and then an exchange of stuff for a KYC check. Uh, uh, and I think one of our main killer features in, like, in this regard is that um, if an exchange is staff for a KYC check, uh, the customer is notified, like, hey, uh, your, like, your transaction seems suspicious. Would you mind submitting your documents for KYC? They can say no. Uh, they can say no, I'm not ready to pass a KYC check. And then we just issue them a refund. And that's pretty much it. Um, how are they even contacted, right? So, because what info are they giving up when they initiate the exchange? So um, when uh, a person initiates an exchange, uh, they have a special, like, they don't need to submit any of their personal data right at the start. They might want to submit their email address, but okay. uh, there's a special page in the end which has an exchange ID and the statuses of an exchange like passing, like, we're waiting for a deposit, the deposit has confirmed, we're exchanging and then sending to you, and yada, yada, yada. Uh, when an exchange is passed for a KYC check, there is a special warning thrown, um, which says, like, transaction failed, your transaction seems suspicious, please submit this and this and this to support at changenow.ia or something like that. So, um, as you already mentioned, there is no way for us to, you know, reach out to our customers directly, uh, but we've worked out a solution that works pretty well so far. So they're basically reaching out to you when they're coin yeah. when they see their coin. How often is that happening? Where there's a you know an event where you have to lock up coins. I don't really know the exact percentage, but it's sometimes like in the single digits, uh, less than ten, probably in the ballpark of five percent of all exchanges that are stuff for a Okay. Check. So what's the uh, What's the what's the long term plan with with you guys? I mean, in terms of obviously th this this is a great service right now, uh, but you know, regulatory environment's always changing. Things are always changing. What what is the plan to to keep you guys chugging along without any interference? <laughs> well, we have. Um we do have a lot of stuff planned, uh, both for the like very near future and like very pretty long term plans right there. Um, one of the main things right now, like on our roadmap, is optimizations and like making our service even better, raise better, speed better, also, um, and uh, expanding our you know like selection of assets that people can you know exchange and uh, whatnot. We're also, uh, if we're talking about, you know, like uh, complying to regulatory, you know, regulatory side of things, we are watching the, you know, the environment very closely. Um, and when or if uh, anything happens with regulations that will sort of impede uh, our working processes, uh, from the regulatory perspective, we do have some solutions that will allow us to stay afloat. Um, one of them yep. to be uh, like an account system, but it's not going to be enforced. Uh, if people would like to sort of uh, keep using our service registration free and completely private, they would be totally free to do so. But we're also uh, going to introduce an account system pretty, like, pretty soon. Um, as in a person can create an account and they can 
uh, like watch their transaction history. They can get perks from having an account. They can upload their documents, but only if they so desire. Uh, that's not going to be enforced in any way, at least not now. But um, that's like one of the points that we're sort of like, um, that's one of the ways that we've uh, chosen to go to sort of be pre pre like, you know, prepared uh, for the environment changing in a regulatory way. So allowing people to opt in to, to registering. Yeah. And what, what's the, the benefits for them? Like you said, so they could see their transaction history, I guess. Uh, they could see their transaction history. There's also going to be a cashback system implemented um, with our own token. It's called now. And we're sort of going to use it as a cashback slash uh, benefit purchasing method within the account. So if a person wants to get better rates, they can like pay a little, like, you know, a little subscription, get their rates better. They can get, again, as I already mentioned, they can get cash back on exchanges. And there's also going to be sort of like um, a store of sorts where people can maybe like purchase something that our partners provide, stuff like that. It's still like in the very early development stages. So I can't really talk much about it, but um, I have a pretty good feeling that it's going to be completely and totally epic when it's released. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How about um, how about things like IP address? Do you guys have to block certain IPs? Uh, uh, IP addresses, unless like someone from the you know someone from law enforcement comes in and is like. Oh, there is this person coming in from this certain neighborhood. No, is it based on geography, based on where people are essentially coming in from? No, not at all. Like, this is just not something that we've uh, ever chosen to do. Basically, we do not geoblock people. We have never done that, nor are we planning on doing that in any type of future, unless, uh, I don't know, unless there is some sort of like an enforcement measure that we will be forced to do. But other than that, I don't really see us doing that in any way, shape or form. Okay. And then what I was trying to get up for in terms of like uh, anticipating the future. Um, so I know you guys are thinking of creating a, essentially a way to opt in to register. But how about other other means of exchange, um, like uh, atomic swaps? So obviously BTC, XMR, atomic swaps are being worked on. Are you guys uh, looking to be maybe one of the, the gateways to that? Uh, atomic swaps have been on our radar for a very, very long time, ever since, I think, um, Atomidex, I think, uh, by Komodo, uh, they released it back in 2018, I think. Uh, and back then, like, Atomic Swaps were all the rage, and we have always known that this was, like, a direction that we would have to pursue at some point. And um, right now, we're watching the, the, you know, the technology pretty closely to work out how we can, you know, integrate that into our ecosystem. So if um, like if the atomic, you know, if the atomic swap thing is uh, like if it gets more widespread uh, in the nearest future and if it's not, you know, um, how would you say like human interactable to use as is uh, by people who are, you know, our regular customers, we will probably do our best to integrate it, like integrate atomic swaps into our service as a gateway uh, so that people can enjoy atomic swaps without having to leave change now and go elsewhere. Yeah, because there's going to need to be that marketplace where people that are looking to exchange, you know, BTC or XMR or vice versa to meet up and atomic swap. Of course, it is on our radar, so uh, probably like right now is in, you know, the R&D stage. Uh, we need to work out how it's supposed to work, how uh, we can, you know, integrate it in, stuff like that. Right now, we're like mostly working on integrating new liquidity providers to expand our coin selection. Um, Pancake, like PancakeSwap is on the way, KuCoin is on the way, so... Uh, after that, we'll probably start looking into atomic swaps. 
Well, I, I know you'd certainly be heroes in the Monero community if uh, you were one of the first to do that. Uh, people are very excited to to try to to try to utilize those. I imagine um, also it's a little difficult because the the business model would would have to change, right? You're you're now. Um, you're you're bringing people together to exchange, but you know how do you, how do you get an exchange fee on an atomic swap, or what would the model be there? Do you have any thoughts on that? Of course, um, I have to admit I don't really have any thoughts on that so far because this is still like very new. Uh, this is still something that we need to look into more closely. But if you say like if you're saying that the Monero community would love us really much if we did that, then I guess we should hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to like have a conversation with our CTO as soon as this call is over, just to see how how things are going and how fast we can get this implemented. So, without like you know awesome. uh, having to make very uh, trying to find the word again, um, very sudden and uh, robust. I think you could call it robust changes into our business model. You know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, because I believe Samurai Wallet already is working on kind of a, a, a test run with the BTC to XMR atomic swap. So, yeah, it would be great to see you guys be one of the first to, to get it out. And obviously, uh, it's a, people already know where you are. So, um, so how did you get involved in all this? So, you, you've... <laughs> Been on this team for for uh, I guess a few years now. Were you in crypto before then? How did you find your way to change now? Oh, this is actually this is a funny story, which is a blast to tell every time. Uh, so basically, I um, I am a linguist by trade, like by training and by profession originally. And uh, when I was pursuing my master's in psycholinguistics, I was just sitting in class one day. And one of my professors was like, hey, my friend is looking like my friend looks in like in an IT startup and she's looking for employees. Uh, all you need to do is to like, you know, not be dumb and be well spoken. Um, and I was unemployed at the moment. Uh, it was like a pretty tough year for me financially. So I was like, why not? Um, she gave me the contact and I reached out. And when I came to the job interview, uh, our CEO was there and she was like, hey, uh, we're a startup. We work uh, in crypto and blockchain. Uh, is this something that you would be interested in? And I was like, sure, why not? This sounds interesting. And three years from now, uh, here I am. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's how I got into change. Now, I've certainly heard about blockchain and crypto before. One of my classmates from school did uh, like he was one of the early adopters and he did manage to get rich off of Bitcoin um, back in like 2017 when it all happened and um, I always looked at him like wow this guy sure must be doing something there and um, my mom also talked to me about crypto she was like oh there's this Bitcoin thing I think it was back in 2015 like we should join in we should buy we should buy and I was like mom what are you talking about this is like probably old bullshit and a scam and then I like when uh, I was getting hired and when I joined the company and I when I've been there for a while, I realized that my mom was right in the very beginning. Like we sh should have hopped in back then. <laughs> it's never so, too late, though. It's never too late, right? Of course, of course. I do hold like uh, I do hold some crypto. Uh, I do have like a little portfolio there. You get, paid, I, you get paid in crypto at all, or um, we do get paid like. Um, certain employees uh when they work overtime during like very you know hot periods when um there's a lot of work to do for example when something breaks or when we just have like a very huge influx of customers and uh everyone works overtime and we do get like bonuses uh in either like bdc or usdt oh nice yeah so. Very nice. So that's so that's interesting. So you really weren't a crypto person that that just started working for the company. You were an outsider to the crypto world, which is yeah. that's refreshing. Um, so what what has been your your take on crypto then? So seeing that you're not a, a brainwashed uh, crypto fanatic originally, uh, you probably have kind of a healthy, you know, skeptical view of things. I would I would think more so than others. So. How do you how do you look at the at the scene? Well, um, 
basically, I think uh, when I just joined the entire like crypto shebang, I was like uh, very, very cautious, very, very skeptic. I thought that this was just like a bunch of crazy people running around with their internet money. And I was like, I guess they're paying me money, so I'm staying. Uh, but after that, uh, I have given a lot of thought. I've done a lot of research on crypto because like when you work at a crypto startup, you have to always like, you know, be up to date, uh, about the market. You have to be up to date about the technology and whatnot. And, uh, I personally think that, you know, the, the fee that says like, you know, banking the unbanked and banking the banked, uh, is something that is going to work out really well, uh, you know, like long term. I believe that crypto is really good for social good because um, I do have a lot of friends from sort of like, you know, like the more, you know, progressive and poor side of the world, you know. Um, and uh, a lot of them are struggling financially. And um, I've seen a lot of people, you know, asking for mutual aid, asking for donations, for example. Like you're scrolling Twitter one day and you see that a person is like, out of an apartment or they don't really have anything to eat tonight and they're asking for people to send them like 10 or 20 dollars so they can buy themselves a pizza or something and um they usually collect donations on paypal and paypal is uh like it is very widespread and um it does work really well when you're trying to send money from like all around the world but the thing is that PayPal does collect a lot of fees. So, for example, if I were to send this struggling person like five dollars so they so that they can eat tonight, uh, I will probably pay like seven dollars in fees. Uh, if I were like if I were sending from Europe to America, for example, right? If I were to send them Monero or any other crypto for that matter, uh, well, not Bitcoin, but yeah, any most other cryptos. <laughs> but if I were to send them some low transaction fee crypto they would receive all of that money from me to them. And I believe that like uh, that side of crypto is going to be really big in the future. And I think that this is like, this is a very good initiative that more and more people in the world should pursue. So if I were to help people, I would much rather give all of my money to them than have part of it go to like a billionaire who already has a lot of like, a lot more money they know what to do with, you know. Um, this might probably be like a very, you know, radical take, but that's... No, I, I think that is, I think that's the, the core take, right? It's about uh, getting rid of the middleman. Um, so, so we actually, I don't know if you, have you heard of Gratuitous, the, the, start, the little startup that we have? So we're uh, doing... Um, not yet, but do tell. Uh, so Gratuitous, we're, we're selling coffee. We started this like two years ago, but then we got interrupted. I ran for Congress over here, so I put everything on hold. But now I sparked it back up. And basically, coffee is the first product. We sell coffee from Guatemala, from a farm in Antigua, Guatemala. And what what we've done is allow people that purchase the coffee to send tips in Monero to the farmers that farm the coffee. So we went down to Antigua, Guatemala. We gave the farmers their own Monero paper wallets. We taught them about Monero. And now we have people buying coffee. We, we sell it online. Uh, you know, you can buy a bag of coffee. We also have been selling it out on the street, actually. We've been testing that. And it's great because you could teach people about crypto as you're doing it. And often part of the conversation is, well, you, you would, we wouldn't be able to do this concept but for crypto. You know, so that, that's mm -hmm. that's why I started exactly. to kind of exemplify. It. There'd be no other way to tip the Guatemalan farmer 50 cents pre crypto. You couldn't they don't have even if they had they don't have a Venmo account, you know, uh, they don't have a bank account. Of course. Of and course. Uh, actually, you know, it, it doesn't even work with Bitcoin right now because of the transaction fee. So that opens a lot of people's eyes to the utility of Monero. But. I know you guys are also so there's there's now payments as well, right? Which is of part of your company. That's uh um I would say that it's like a part of our e we do have that are in the you know under the now brand. Mm -hmm. Uh it's changed now, now payments, which is a payment system that facilitates crypto payments and 
I think 70 assets right now. Uh, and also now nodes. Uh, now nodes is like a blockchain infrastructure that's ready made uh, so that the people who are building on Monero or any other blockchain that now node supports, they can just get an API key, they can plug into the blockchain and they don't really have to like, you know, uh, struggle with, uh, you know, maintaining their own infrastructure. They already have all of that provided for, um, I don't know their pricing policy right now, but I think it's pretty cheap. So that's that's the three main things that we like sort of exist under one umbrella and that we, you know, uh, help promote on the regular. So okay. Say. Yes, I was I'm bringing that up because tying it into gratuitous, we spoke with uh, some of the people over at Now Payments, which I oh. guess obviously you're your coworkers of, of sorts. So we're trying to uh, add them because I think they're coming out with the widget for uh, different, different uh, e-commerce systems. Mm -hmm. So using the one that we use, we want to tie now payments into there so people can, obviously people can uh, use Monero to buy coffee right now, but we don't have it set up in a seamless way. It's kind of clunky actually. We, have, we, we literally send them the address to send the Monero to. So just letting you know, we'll, we'll be hopefully integrating now payments into our e-commerce once you guys have that set up. That's excellent. I'm really, really glad. Uh, the now payments team is working really, really hard. I personally know all of those people and they're, they're CEOs. All of their business development team, they're really, really great, very dedicated and passionate people. and. Uh, like their Shopify plugin uh, has finally been released. This is like a very big thing that I kind of feel obliged to talk about because I actually have worked uh, at Now Payments like from October to February. And um, the Shopify plugin is usually very, very hard to develop because uh, the SDKs, like the development accessories uh, for Shopify are not open source. So they had to, you know, to source them themselves and develop everything themselves. And that's been like a really, really huge step for now payments. And I'm, I'm really proud of the team. I'm really proud of everyone there. And uh, it's really, really great that you're getting that integrated into gratuitous. Like this is super, like this is super exciting. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we're very excited about it. So we use ECWID, which is kind of uh, like a Shopify. So that's why we have to wait because yeah. we, we don't use Shopify. Uh -huh. um, I don't remember why we tried. I think it was the easiest way for us to set up an e-commerce at the time. So, mm -hmm. so we're waiting for the widget that will launch for ECWID, which I think uh, you guys will be launching soon, or now payments will be launching soon. Hurry up, then. Yeah, one of the other things we want to try to do as well is automate the tipping so that people can tip to one address, and then it could auto be sent out to... The 20, like right now, we have 20 farmers that have their paper wallets. So it'd be great if the tip can come into one and then it could auto split and be sent out to the oh, 20. Yeah. And I think uh, in our talking with now payments, they might be able to help us with that. Yeah, they do have a mass payment solution, which like has been engineered to do just that. So you put in one amount and then it gets like split into smaller amounts and sent to different wallets. So yeah, that, that also exists. So what, uh, anything else you want to bring up? Um, what, what else should well, we, uh, any, anything else you guys are working on that you want the community to know about? Right now, the rest of the things that we're working on is probably kept under wraps. Uh, not because like we're being purposefully secretive, uh, but just because, you know, um, Everything just feels better when it's a surprise. So um, right now, most of the stuff we're working on, as I, as I have already mentioned, is like uh, infrastructure optimization and scalability so that we can accept even more transactions every and each day. Uh, so yeah, uh, I, I think the only thing I would like to say, again, is to extend my sincere gratitude to you uh, for having me on the podcast and the Monero community, uh, who have been super, super great with us lately. And yeah, uh, thank you so much for being awesome and being the way you are. Really, really, really appreciate you. 
Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for providing the utility. I, like I said, we tell people all the time, even when I'm out now selling this coffee, because people are like, well, how do I get, because I'm in New York. So a lot of people don't even know how to get Monero and, you know, so um, it's, it's nice that you guys exist as an avenue to, to Monero and it's, it's a very easy way to do it. To I guess uh, a, a final question would be, you know, so you guys, you, you're coin agnostic. It sounds like you're, you also personally are coin agnostic. Where do you see this whole space going, given your your take, your view of the of the ecosystem? Uh, that's a that's that's a really good question. Um, right now, we are obviously like in a very very you know overblown bull market. Everything is just like reaching ATH left and right, and. Um, I think that uh, there are like two ways for the industry to, like to go right now. It's either plunging into crypto winter sometime soon or going in high and reaching new heights. And I think like I personally think this is just not not the company's opinion. This is my own. Uh, I think that we could really, really do with uh, a little crypto winter right now because when everything, like when the markets crashed uh, back in 2018, there has been a lot of talk about how, you know, um, being in the crypto winter, a lot of like scams and dishonest, you know, bad actors uh, get flushed out of the space. And that is sort of like a healthy thing uh, for the entire blockchain industry and whatnot. And right now, um, I am on the internet a lot, obviously. I am a crypto enthusiast. I do look at a lot of, like, at a lot of stuff in the space. And I think that with crypto being uh, like so widely available, uh, which is a good thing, obviously, adoption is great. Uh, there is a lot of like, you know, space for bad actors to prey on really, really vulnerable demographics. Like we went to an event uh, last week and there have been, I think like three or four, like legit financial pyramids out there with a lot of people lurking about. And I think if a crypto winter came about, that would most likely, uh, rid of, rid the space from them. But then again, um, if we're sort of like, if we keep, uh, riding the bull trend, that is also a really good thing. Uh, because more and more people are going to learn about crypto. Elon Musk is going on SNL uh, like next Saturday, which is also going to be like whether you look at it as a good or a bad thing. This is going to be like a pretty huge step for crypto, especially if he starts promoting it. Like, Wait, what's live Elon Musk doing? I, I missed the Elon. Elon Musk is going on Saturday Night Live uh, on May eighth. Oh, okay. Yeah, and. Uh, I know he's been met with a lot of backlash from uh, from people. Everybody that doesn't own Doge, basically. Yeah, everybody that doesn't know Doge. <laughs> uh, and like whether it's like a good thing or a bad thing for SNL, it's probably going to be like a very huge step for crypto because he is most likely going to talk about Bitcoin on live television in front of like a huge amount of people. And that's great. Adoption's great. Yeah. That is exciting. So yeah. uh, maybe a better question is where, where does your mom see the space going? Seeing that she was the, the one who told you to buy uh, Bitcoin years ago. Well, uh, my mom is sort of just like an observer. She, I don't think she has like right now, she has any opinion on where the crypto industry is going, but she's just happy to be along for the right. She <laughs> does have a little bit of Bitcoin and she just like, she just likes watching the numbers grow. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, greatly appreciate it. I'm sure we'll we'll be in touch in some way. And uh, any any you want to uh, give any resources to the community, or maybe where people could even find you and follow you, or of course, um, we can find Change Now on ChangeNow.io. Uh, if you'd like to donate your swap fees to the Monero project, you can go to XMRExchange.io. You can follow us on Twitter over at changenow underscore io, or you can follow me on Twitter at uh, at p shanget, just like. Um, 
and you can find me on Telegram at Deep Moist. Uh, come say hi if you have any questions or need help or have a specific inquiry. Uh, I'm always open to basically anything. So feel free to drop into my Telegram DMs and have a conversation. Awesome. You cut out when you mentioned the Twitter. What's the Twitter handle? Oh, are you kind of guess? At capital P, capital S, and then hang it. So like okay. that's my first name, my last name. Uh, and you can find me word. So yeah, if you'd like to have a conversation about Monero or about change now, about anything, or you need help at some point, uh, come say hi. I always get really excited when I'm talking to customers. So yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for taking the time too. Thank you for having me. Thank you for getting up this early in the morning for me. Uh, this is yeah, really no, exciting. no worries. I got to, I got to drink my gratuitous coffee. Excellent. Excellent. Cheers. All right. Have a good one. Thank you, Paulina. Thanks. Bye bye, Doug. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you have an Alexa device, you can tell it to listen to the latest episode of the Monero Talk podcast. Go to monerotalk.live slash subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.